question for anyone on the panel who wants to take it. How do you sell branding? Because when people come to you, often come going, oh, the logo, or, you know, so they're focusing on that output level, um, or coming and going, oh, I'm writing, but how do you broaden that conversation out to people who are still stuck at that, that just end point? Who, I just need a logo. I think it's about selling um, or educating them first on on what they if they come to you for a logo, educating them on again that branding is greater than just the logo process, um, and really I suppose creating a bit of a vision for them. So listening to what they have and why they came to you for a logo, but then giving them answers that they didn't necessarily expect or anticipate that you would deliver. I think a bit of that thought leadership and acting like you're a partner in their business um, then allows you to give them a much broader picture. Is that vision different to the business's vision? Well, usually they have a pretty clear vision on who they are, but what they can't do is express a vision to take that to market. So that's where we generally plug in. Um, we, we ask them a lot of questions um, to, I suppose, get out the vision that's inside their head, and then we have to develop the direction for how they take that to market. A logo may be one part of that, um, but it might be about engaging, reconnecting with old customers or with new markets. Um, and using your collective skills and resources to provide that solution. Can I just ask you um, something a little different? There's a list of you trademarked, and whether it's something that there is any value you think in that process? I have, it's on my list. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what do you recommend in trademarking? What have you found? Because you all have different elements in your, your businesses. Yeah. Uh, what would be your trademark? I've registered the, my logo mm -hmm. as a you know, registered mm -hmm. brand. I already have one, and I'm just we're rebranding. So I'm just really considering the value of, of doing that again. process again. It's not that expensive. I mean, well, $450 or something to, to go through the process. It takes that nine month. Mm -hmm. um, I have the legal advice that I should, and I admit mm -hmm. that I'm really terrible with admin stuff. Mm -hmm. but, and that's mostly because I, I'm in my business and I do everything. Mm -hmm. And so there are quite a few things that often get put on the list yeah. and don't get cut. I guess my view is listening to you guys, you put a lot of work into it, mm -hmm. and at, at some point you do need to protect that. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you can do that right on through, like, yeah, yeah. Very easy. That's very helpful. Actually. I know, Sam. <laughs> I know. <coughs> I just wondering what. <laughs> I think it adds value to your brand. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to sell your business in the future, mm -hmm. um, it, it adds value there. And once you lodge the application, you can put use the symbol, can't you? Mm -hmm. Just pending, or you just use the symbol. Mm -hmm. Question about keywords, and when you were talking about keywords, and you know that notion of writing down what the brand, your brand means, and the brand values and the personalities. Do you think you'd be using those as keywords? It's valuable. I always, um, when I go through that process, I always try and think what are the questions that a consumer is going to be asking, which is relative to the service that I provide. So for instance, um, it's not necessarily about the brand values that I have, but it might be about um, how to develop a logo or how to build a marketing campaign. If you can preempt what those questions are that you think your customers are going to be searching for, then I'd be developing content um, and building your keywords around the answers to that. It's like for us, if I know that if I do a story on five of the best cocktail bars in Canberra, anyone who's searching for cocktail bus camera, you know, and they are routinely the ones that get the best um, click-through rates because, you know, there's a greater chance that people will come across it. That's why we also try and um, be among the first to write about new places that are open because we know people will be searching for, say... New places. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. by, the, by the name or, you know. So if we have something up, relatively early in the life cycle that people will find us and 
you know, we might get a new audience because of that. I think it's worth um, looking into like Google Analytics and either you learning how to use it or finding someone else who knows how to use it to do it for you and figuring out what it is on Google that people or other search engines that people are searching for. And it changes all the time too, so you kind of have to go with it. Like people don't actually search, they used to 10 years ago, how do I lose weight? But there's so many different ways to lose weight online anymore. People don't search like that anymore. They now search, um, what, how do I find a cleanse? Or what is a detox? Or, you know, they're now searching for more specific things. So it's, it's worthwhile. And I mean, the last, I just did a massive database um, rejig in terms of like the referral source that I collect. So 33% of them are unknown and they don't write down where, how they heard about us. But of the other, then my top four are, well my top one is Google, like 40% search for me online, so it was vital that I had SEO on my website and that that was working well, I knew that. Um, and then it was Facebook, um, and then referrals from other like key businesses, so, um, and then of course word of mouth. So I think it's worth, if you are online, and it's in your industry that people would search for you online, to learn that kind of stuff with your website and the keyword and stuff. Do you think Kate missed anything? Her rebranding? Mm. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, any tips? Yeah, congratulations. Great. <laughs> just you? keep your personality in the brand because I think it's you're so bubbly and vivacious and yeah, like you're saying, if that's not on that Facebook page, yeah, it needs to be there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I just had a question because I know Apple is actually stopping people using an Apple logo. So that was something that I spotted. Have they spotted your young logo yet? Or have you got permission? Because they actually have a trademark on, on an apple being used. Yeah. Sure. I don't know if the leaf makes it different or how it works, but that was because that's the brand. I'm interested to see if they get that through. Similar to Cadbury a couple of years ago where they tried to yeah. trademark purple and it got rejected. Yeah. Um, so it'd be interesting. Mm -hmm. I have had one person, like a random person, when I first walked the brand. Go, that's copying. I was like, seriously, we're not competition for Apple. <laughs> you know, but I mean. But you have that trademark. Yeah. No. Oh. They do. So you oh, may. Oh, Apple has a trademark. Yeah, yeah, you may still yet hear from them. But I really like it. <laughs> it's it's a lot of hard to take it over. We'll just yeah. change it to another fruit. <laughs> <laughs> or you could do the thing. Um, okay. Yeah, I had I only just saw it on TV. Somebody from is being sued by Apple recently. It was two of them. One was a clothing one, and one was to do with the Apple. That's what my I did. But the Apple looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. it doesn't mm -hmm. It's different. It, yeah, that's what it, it may be. That's why I was wondering if it. I it also don't use the Apple alone. I use the Apple with the circle. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I guess my question is like if that if you've got a close brand, how do you check for that? Or this, I mean, or you don't. It's so. I remember years ago working on a for the Rebrand Food Group, and they'd done all this market research, developing this logo of sunrise over cutting irrigation fields, and, and then they actually went through a process with a, a marketing consultancy, and they pulled up I reckon about a dozen nearly identical logos from across the world. It's kind of like there are finite yeah, images. That <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it with that. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions about your own brand or discuss your individual brand? I think it'd be um Quite a few of you have mentioned the need to understand the personality of your brand and to go out and ask your colleagues and friends and clients and whatnot. It'd be great if there was some kind of template survey thing that you could use. Any recommendations on how you might approach that? Because I'm imagining just calling up someone, asking them questions, yeah. but if I had some guidance on what questions to ask, it would really help. I've got a few things at, um, at the office which are all sort of about, I guess, current state and, and desired state and perception and all of that sort of thing. I'll 
acting out. I find things else that are so much. Any suggestions? I think it's very individual. Um, you could ask your clients how they perceive you yep. in your business and, mm -hmm. and what sort of words come up for them. Yep. Maybe. Yep. And that will bring up bring out your personality. Yes, yeah, so I think it's just that it's that initial question. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I think too, yeah. you just have to start the brainstorm. Because I know when I was working with Candice and she would ask me these questions like that. I was like, I don't know, you know, but it wasn't until I started just just writing random stuff down that then all of a sudden it clicked. You'd write down a word, you're like, no, that's actually not me. And then you kind of, it's yeah. sort of, I think, I think it's important, yeah, to give yourself that space to kind of get it flowing, I guess. Because mm. sometimes when you initially think about your business, it's just that you're just drawing blanks a bit. Yeah. But I think it is really important to get other people's perceptions of you because the whole thing about branding is that, you know, there's that saying, it's not what you say you are, it's what they say you are. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you might think that you're putting a certain image out there, but people are actually consuming your message, you might be completely different. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do you think leading people in, or just like a, just a question like, what does the healthy eating club mean to you? Is that too broad? A lot of things like that. Mm -hmm. What attracted you to the healthy eating club? Um, testimonials too can sort of bring out what people perceive your brand to be. Mm -hmm. It's that whole, what we're saying, you know, if there are recurring kind of terms that are coming up with people are saying about you, whether it's in feedback or you know, all that sort of thing. That's really valuable because it's helpful you can see how you're perceived in the eyes of consumers. I guess that a way of gaining that information that I tried that worked really well was that I run workshops on feeding fussy toddlers and there's a workbook that goes along with it and um, they got a hard copy of it. But then I sent out a follow-up email a couple of days later saying thank you for attending if you like a PDF copy of this workbook which has hyperlinks in it, um, you know, I'd love to hear your thoughts on how you found the workshop and, you know, and say, please, can I have a PDF? So most people wanted the PDF, so then it meant that they then were like, your workshop was really good and blah, blah, blah. And so I got some feedback. And some of them, it was really honest, you know, like, oh, I felt that part was rushed and I would have loved more time on that. So then. That was good, so then it meant that when I did it again, so that was good. I kind of offered them something, if you'd like it, just reply and say, yes, I'd love a PDF, and would you mind giving me two or three sentences on how you found the workshop? Great. Or the service. And that, that worked really well. I got like maybe 15 to 16 testimonials out of that, which then was really good to market subsequent workshops. Mm -hmm. I also found um, uh, asking what expectations were like when you I take a new take form for um, clients of mine and online I ask them what they're expecting from the service or what they're like to achieve um, and that helps you know you to really understand what they're aiming for because sometimes they think it's slightly different from what you think you where you mm -hmm. think you would like yeah. to take them for what they need yeah um, and uh, yeah also just moments words from just Yeah. I mean, we could kind of break and formally and have you know, micro questions that people might want to ask to give individual names. But is there anything else? Is there any, or is there any thing that anyone 